this is the service APIs meeting for April 23. And I will hand it over to Bowie. It sounded like uh, he had a couple things to talk about to get started. Bowie, do you want me to share my screen with anything? Sorry, someone's been asking of something here. Um, yeah, I wanted to kind of go through sort of uh, maybe we can just whiteboard given all the previous discussions, uh, close up on some sketch of what we want TLS configuration to be, at least in terms of the schema, because I think given all of the past conversations, I just wanted to sort of lock that in, at least for this initial draft. And then based on that, uh, we can see who who's, would want to sort of work out the details. And then the other one was to discuss moving traffic split into HTTP route as well. So those were the two things that we chatted about yesterday. I was hoping we could use the time today. And then we also put on the agenda for next week is to talk about L4 and just devote a whole session to L4. Um, how does that sound? Does anyone have, well, to start off with, does anyone have any burning issues uh, that they would like discussed as well? We can do about 10 minutes of just going over the PRs and the issues maybe, Rob? And if people oh, have sure. a particular thing that they want to kind of raise, that would be good. Um, Rob, do you mind sharing the agenda doc? Yeah. I don't. Yeah. Okay, thank you. And uh, let's see. And uh, oh, yeah. does someone so want to volunteer to take notes or I can try to take notes as well? Let me just yeah, that'd be some. great if, if anyone could take notes. Uh, we, we once had really great meeting notes, um, but then, yeah. Um, so I should highlight that a number of PRs have been merged in the past week, so that's exciting. Um, I can go through, we have less PRs right now that are actually needing review. Um, it looks like something that uh, maybe the verification script uh, that I updated in test infra isn't working quite right, uh, but we have a lot of uh, verify scripts that are now running against all these PRs. Uh, I don't know it looks like there are some new issues. Did we want to cover these briefly in the in the first few minutes of this meeting, uh, Danny? And it looks yeah. Like let's let's go one. through it. Okay. By header type, do we mean method, HTTP method, or header? What is a header type? Um. It's a good question. That's what I'm trying to understand and why I created the issue. Uh, I mean, if we go to uh, the HTTP route API type, um, let's see here, under the HTTP route match, we'll see we've got a path type and a path. And if we look at path type, core supports exact and prefix, extended supports regular expression matching. So, um, and then we've got the path as well. Um, and now we have the header type and header. And this, um, let me, give me a second and I'll. I think this was about mind. exact, like so matching a header key versus a header value as like an exact string versus allowing for regular expressions in the value of the header. Yeah, I think this needs a clarification. So this would be pretty easy to fix. Okay. Are there, just put there in a the subset chat window. of types that we would like to support? Uh, like exact and prefix makes sense. And I guess I guess it could be very similar to this, uh, to the path types we're already supporting above. Yeah, like probably not prefix in a header, but a substring sure. or something. Um, 
this one is, uh, thanks for filing the issue, Damien. This one is probably easy for someone to just go off and investigate what potentially could go here. And then uh, the, the comment should be sort of expanded to say specifically like, it's going to match the value of the header. Yeah. Can you assign that to me, Rob? I can take that. Yeah, sure. It sounds like it's a match, more like a match type that we're trying to describe there. Yeah, the, I think the name is quite bad. Great. Okay. Yeah, L7 versus L4. I know we wanted to talk more about this uh, next week. I don't know if there's much to be said here. Oh, did you have any thoughts? I think yesterday we decided to explicitly add some verbiage, at least on the concepts. Um, but let's see in concrete terms what it means in the discussion next week. OK. Cool. And yeah, I think we've covered all of these yesterday now, so I don't know that. Uh, uh, the the overwhelming decision here was that it makes sense for gateway class to be able to reference parameters inside a namespace, uh, which is not currently the case. So we can make it that that way. And I volunteered to take that one on. And I think the rest we've already covered. I don't think there's any new. Uh, pull request per se. Uh, this one we've had lots of discussion about. Um, and James, I think we've also. Have we talked about yours, James? Uh, I don't like... think so. Okay. Um, so, any... so I was reading through the API and there was um, a couple of error conditions which were noted in or kind of implicit in the way that listeners work. So mm -hmm. I added explicit um, error condition names for those to match those. So okay. a, uh, a name can, a name, there's syntactic restrictions on what you can name a listener, which implies that there's an invalid name condition and um, listener names must be unique within a gateway, which implies that you can have an error case, which is a name conflict. Okay, yeah. Yeah, this makes sense. Cool. Oh, uh, is this it? Because it's tiny. Maybe, all right. Yeah, Let me that take was a it. Look. It, looks, it looks reasonable. It has Excellent. an okay to test. Maybe just needs a rebase. I'm not sure. Um, oh, probably just needs code gen. Or no, you've already done code gen. I don't know what's going on here, but. It might be a rebase on the code gen. Yeah, because we merged a bunch of stuff that may like. Oh it. yes, that's yeah. So we a lot of things. Have oh yeah, the branch has some um, CRD conflicts. types and yeah, there's conflicts on the gateway classes. Yeah, yeah. makes sense. Okay. I, I can I can rebase okay. that. Great, thanks. Uh, I know we've already talked about this one, Damien. It sounds like you were just going to make a, a couple updates to this PR. Is there anything? Yeah, I was hoping to have about? it ready for the um, for today's meeting. I actually pushed right before today's meeting, but it looks like um, something has gone sideways with uh, a recent PR. I think it was yours, Rob. Um, yes, that it was, was yeah. up. Yeah, I was updating the CRD version, and and now Gateway classes um, uh, is not is not working when I. To a, I think, uh, make install. I, I think what happened is 149 and 151 merged at the approximately the same time, and they probably should have conflicted, or one should have broken the other. I'm not sure, uh, but yeah, I'll, I'll follow up right after the meeting to to see what what went wrong here. Um, so. And yeah, I don't know. Uh, we, we only have half an hour left in the meeting, so maybe we should move on to uh, TLS.
Uh, it looks like Bowie has uh, some top level topics. I also have uh, this spreadsheet open that you'd, uh, that we'd made before in a previous meeting. I oh yes, thank you. Helpful. Okay. Yeah, so um, I, as I recall, after many, many discussions, I think we were okay for now going with the current setup where the TLS termination settings will live with the listener block on the gateway. Rob, please correct me if I, my memory is incorrect. That sounds right. Yeah, so I just wanted to double check um, that is the case and then we can go and try to, and then this, it's a separate discussion about how to handle the TLS client side of things where if you had a proxy that terminated and then you had to originate a TLS connection, what those settings were. So if you look at the notes, um, I just wanted to, to basically come back to that for now, again, this is the first draft, we're okay with putting TLS termination settings in the listener. Uh, the TLS client settings, we have to figure out where that lives. Right now there's like two places potentially. One is we say that will be something on service and then sort of figure out how to do it on service or somewhere near the forward to towards a service or maybe some parameter there the forward to reference i think we call it forward to reference now we do um, yeah. all right I, yeah I don't know. it may just be forward to yeah. uh, that sounds about uh, right okay both those cases yeah like that's not like yeah that's where i was expecting like something like forward to or service specific or route specific uh upstream TLS and then there might be a place where we can define like a more generic section for TLS settings you know like some TLS connection properties they don't need to be duplicated on an each route level right so that can be probably think... implementation specific for now like not not move that into the core API for now I see. And then the final one was that people were discussing whether or not you would have a like a CRD or um, something else. And I think we settled on as a group that we will probably try to share a common TLS setting struct as a type to use in the API, but not try to like carve out a resource in of itself to do it because that seems just going to be way too many resources to manage. I kind of wanted to sort of uh, just, this is kind of like a summary of the discussion. I know we had several sessions that weren't focused on TLS and we're coming back to it. So I just wanted to make sure everyone's on the, the same page with respect to this. Hey, can you just then I think if refresh we, my memory, um, either you Bowie or, or Rob, how do we deal with the use case where it's, um, app developers that have access to um, HTTP routes, but not the gateway, um, kind of a application developer self-service model to add TLS settings, specifically certificates to routes. Yeah, I think that one, um, the where we went with that one was to ask the question if it that could be functionality that's layered on top of this API. So let's say that the let's say like you enable Let's Encrypt on your gateway and it's watching your gateway and all the routes underneath. And uh, using Let's Encrypt, like right now, actually, that's how. Um, and please correct me if I'm wrong because I haven't used this directly. That's basically how the cert manager works: is that it watches an ingress, it watches all the domain names associated with that ingress and then it goes and fetches, it does like the magic to, to fetch the certs and, and attach them. Like you could think of similar automation if you wanted to have a more self-service model, but it would be like someone will have to set that up sort of on the side and not necessarily bake it into like our, the, this API layer. 
Yeah, the the thinking at the time was, as if I remember the discussion, just to build on that, is that well, we imagined that most application developers who wanted TLS on their app and didn't have access to configure a gateway directly were likely not uh, users that would be providing or generating their own certs. They would be using some level of automation to do that already. And if a controller could then just uh, be aware of this API and connect the dots for them, that seems like the ideal use case. Uh, right. So theoretically that, can, that can hypothetical controller could magically add the necessary search to the listener TLS config block. Yeah, I think that sort of aligns with how Cert Manager works with Ingress. I think it does yeah. it manipulate secrets. I think it manipulates the secrets, doesn't it? Hi, uh, that's Rob. Uh, I think you've used it before. Yeah, I have used it before, but it, it's changed since I've I've used it. Yeah. Uh, so it manipulates the secrets, but it does not manipulate the Ingress resource. Oh, interesting. I. Although I had a conversation with those folks and I think they do do some munging of the ingress, but it, it's more around fetch, uh, getting, like completing Wait. the source manager flow. Yeah, so they do create an ingress resource to complete the challenge, the HTTP challenge, but they don't, don't edit any existing ones. And then, so they create yeah. an ingress resource, so the proxy you know, source of the challenge, then they get the certificate from the ACME provider, create a new sort of create an existing secret or I mean replace the ex existing secret and then delete the ingress resource they use to complete the challenge that's the flow they use for the HTTP challenge part. and when you but do your secret like request you specify the secret name that you want and when they create the final secret that contains your key and your certificate bundle they'll put it in that secret that you named Right, so you could use that if you, if you had an empty secret initially, the application developer attached, it issues the challenge. Um, that's definitely something that we should work out, especially in coordination with the search manager folks, just to see like what, in terms of the API, we would want to specifically specify how it behaves to make that flow potentially work. Um, it does seem like an interesting, maybe we should make a note of it to follow up with the cert manager as a particular use case. I think we have an issue that was filed. Yeah, I, I feel like we either uh, responded to an issue or uh, added some documentation covering this, but yeah, I mean, I, I don't, you know, I, I know there are other, uh, other potential implementations of uh, TLS automated TLS provisioning, uh, but it would be it would be very helpful uh, to at least understand how if something like Cert Manager could make sense of our APIs or if there's a, a real big gap. Yeah, so there is an issue. It's uh, issue 103. So probably okay. we can just follow up on this. Trying to be one of those of 100 that are in that spreadsheet. Uh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I think if we if we mostly ha are okay with this as the rough draft, then basically let's go and look at that TLS struct that's as, as defined, and kind of hash out the details to the extent that we think we we can get an implementation going. Um, Do we already have one defined in gateway types? We do, but it, I don't think it has gotten the scrutiny because most of the conversations have been around like where to, where to move it. Oh, right. uh, yeah. this, is, this is just some placeholder stuff for now. Yeah. Uh, so. Do you want to assign my name to, uh, to that? Because I already have a PR that's pretty dated, but I, I should be able to pretty easily refactor it to um to kind of go in this direction Assign, okay. uh yeah uh which uh, do we have an issue for this i don't think we have an overarching issue because it's okay. it's like n of them Daniel, just update your pr so it pops up to the top 
Yeah. Um, the I think the the thing that if we can we can all look at this and try to figure out what what we can support in the core, uh, that would be good because TLS has like a zillion options and we probably want to have some smallish stuff to begin with. The other one is that in this current setup, we have this notion that there's a there's potential for managed certificates. That's like not a secret. I think that's what the certificate object reference is. Is that right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so that's an interesting one um, to kind of that's sort not of look into more the, detail. Um, yeah, go ahead, James. Sorry, that, that's at least from the comment above that, it says that you're, look, you're actually binding the SNI name in those certificates, which would require you to have the secret as well, right? Because you need the key. Am I that let's right? see. Yeah, let's see. Uh, certificate re list of references, Kubernetes objects, each contain an identity certificate bound to the listener. Host name in the TLS SNI, hello message is used for certificate matching. Okay. Server name must match a route host name to route if the entry empty string. Yeah, just default to secrets. Uh, may support resource if fine, if referent cannot be found. Okay. Um, so you're saying that the server name must match a. So I'm saying that these certificate refs are um, server certificates, which implies that they all have corresponding secrets for the key. So I. What, why do they need the secret per se? I guess like you're saying a Kubernetes secret or you're saying just generally they should have a Oh, uh, okay. So I guess there's the, there's the TLS pass through case where you just inspect the SNI and you're passing through the, you pass through the stream in which, so if, I guess if you're not terminating um, a TLS session, then you wouldn't need the secret. Yeah, but in that case, then you don't even need to look into the, like listener TLS truck as well, right? Yeah, the although you might want to do it for like allowed ciphers, maybe. But you're not even terminating the TLS blacklist. session, so you don't even need to care about the ciphers. You're just looking at the client hello, and that's it. That's true. The only thing you would really care about potentially is version, because you, you haven't done the handshake yet, as I understand it. If you'd like bounce certain versions. Um, I think, uh, let's see, match. I think um, one thing that has not been updated is whether or not we put the specific SNI name in the certificate object reference. Did we update this? I remember we had a discussion yeah, I, I think that could help in a number of cases, but we have not updated that at all. Right now, it is really just a, an object ref, as I recall. Oh, I see. Okay. I, I think yeah. what, at least my memory of what happened was that we had a lot of discussion about TLS um, and realized that um, it was kind of predicated on people's notions about what a gateway was, and we kind of segued mm -hmm. into exploring that. Okay, so I think we need to expand on the behavior of certificate refs and probably the two or three cases. The obvious one is secret that is in Kubernetes as it is today. Um, the second one is potentially a reference to a managed certificate. And the third piece is how we pick uh, bind which one because I know there was discussion like you might have a big bundle but you only pick out particular SNI uh, sort of SANS I guess that you want to match and then the fourth one is for the pass-through whether or not this one is val makes sense probably it's just ignored um, 
so those are like the four things I think maybe we can hash out uh, on the PR, uh, Daniel, if you're going to be putting a new PR up for this. Yeah, that sounds like a good plan. Um, definitely would like to understand more what you mean by managed certificates. Uh, but we can so what I mean by managed PR certificates, I'll give a example is that a lot of the cloud providers have a way to basically generate a certificate for you, but you can only attach it by name and then they actually keep all the bits. So like it never leaves the trusted cloud, so forth. Like you don't, you can't, you can't leak a cert the secret or you can't accidentally misplace the secret. Um, and that's, that's sort of in contrast to storing it inside Kubernetes, which I know some people aren't super uh, keen on storing it inside Kubernetes secrets for various reasons. So for example, you may have it in some, it's called an HSM, like basically some more secure vault that is not a Kubernetes secret. And I know that that, that kind of reference has been, um, like people support that in their products. Does that uh, make sense? Yeah, and then the controller can read the private key though, right? It has read access to it, like even the managed certificate. Yeah, so it depends on the controller. Like there is some negotiation that the controller will be able to support to understand that it's it's not via Kubernetes secrets, but it's not that we force everyone to use Kubernetes secrets because in some cases, for example, these kind of like in the cloud or in the device kind of secret, like you can't actually get the thing out. So you can't put it in a Kubernetes secret anyways. that that makes sense and Daniel for the PR it seems like we are going towards more more or less like the ingress v one way of defining TLS not not doing it on the route level but like having also a mapping of SNI to secrets uh, is that correct from boy yeah I think we discussed it let me look again um, I think it was it probably makes sense uh, I because um, it was probably just an oversight when we sort of ported some notions over. Uh, I don't think it was intentional that we left it out. Although I do want to understand, like, because it's, right now it's just a flat list, whether or not people have some need to either do it automatically or derive it from routes and whether or not that makes sense. One concern I have is that because the API doesn't is feels pretty neutral with regards to SNI binding to the host name, um, it's some that sort of a, then becomes a concern that users have to deal with. Um, so I I wish we could think of a way where it would kind of happen do the right thing automatically. So I'd, we just have, we in the last release of Contour we added um, SNI binding um, because we realized we didn't have it and we also added um, TLS client auth and if you have TLS client auth then you really want to have um, SNI binding as well you can't you don't really want to have you really want to make that um, client auth guarantee. So um, as I understand it it's that you need to make sure that if you terminated the certificate, you can't send it to a route that's like the wrong host. Is that the? Yeah, exactly. So when you say, I want to, I want, so if you say, when you say, when a uh, application says, I want um, TLS client auth on my application name, well then all the HTTP messages that go to the application name have to be, you have to guarantee that they were um, TLS client auth. Isn't that a, can't we just treat that as basically, uh, I have to think through whether or not, I, it feels like we should just add it as a validation, is that your gateway and routes and certificate set form a, the gateway is a su subset of the, no wait, the gateway is a superset of the 
the route hosts is that that it can terminate is that sufficient uh i'm i i don't know but it, so if the gateways so the gateways at the moment as i understand it is a is a super cert so you can attach when you attach logical applications to a gateway you specify their routes and their certificates and so the gateway would terminate anything in all the sni names on all its certificates and it would um apply them in some implementation defined way to to routes right it it doesn't so the the thing that you can i uh sort of guarantee from the config if we wanted to make it like a explicit like this is invalid is to say that if you terminate a set of certificates with some set of names that you cannot have a route that appears that is outside of that set so therefore but it doesn't preclude someone from terminating on one of the valid names and then adding a host header to go to a different one that seems like it would have to be up to the proxy itself to understand that that was somehow like incorrect yeah so uh, the same thing like is it something that we need to like probably standardize but it shouldn't be reflected in in the api itself like it's it's a behavior that we should maybe do some conformance testing on and like you know like the proxy should do that but it's not something that's defined inside the api like we can have docs around it but not have like any yeah any i think i'd be I'd be happier if it, if it was a conformance requirement and we could, and that meant implementations of the spec behaved in a predictable way. I think that'd be, I'd be pretty comfortable with that. I think my, my concern is that we, I don't want to um, kind of push this decision and this, and I don't want to push this off onto, onto end users to have to understand, um, you know, all these, fine grain manipulations in order to get the thing that's the 99 percent case yeah i the thing i don't know is if um uh, how this looks for various implementations like i do, do you know like if implementations can do this kind of check like i mean clearly they can i just don't know off the shelf if if this comes for free I mean, you can do it in Envoy. I know you can do it in Envoy, um, Nginx, HA proxy. I okay. Don't re I, my traffic server knowledge is so out of date. It, it used to be, it did, traffic server didn't do this, but it might have changed in the four or five years since I looked at it. Yeah, so most implementations allow for like checking against it, like is somebody violating it, but I think most implementation don't enforce this behavior that the HTTP host and the SNI match or not by default. Yeah, I think um, so. If it's if it's sufficiently pervasive that we can just say, "Hey, this is a behavior that we can everyone can reasonably implement and make sure it happens." Uh, that's more tenable to just put it as conformance that this is sort of part of the security guarantees. Um, I am a little hesitant to immediately jump there because I don't know if everyone actually can do it at this moment, even though we may want for it to be the behavior. I think that's fair. I, I mean, it, it's early days. I think it's fine for us to just have an issue and, um, you know, keep it in the back of our, you know, keep it in our backlog. I think we, yeah, I think you filed an issue for this. It might be, um, maybe if we dig it up, it'd be great if we, if people who know the implementations the best can kind of point, put pointers to like how to do it uh, for each one. And then we can kind of see, you know, how, whether or not we want to make this a requirement. Let's see, let me see if I can find it. Uh, Rob, maybe it's on the spreadsheet. Sure. One second. Uh, termination policy. See, pluggable access control. Uh, 
Is it 90? Delegation. Oh, as an I bypass. Yeah. So I think we just need to go and see for for the major providers, like um, whether or not we can kind of make this a requirement. Okay, so like everyone kind of can comment on this to see if it's, this is going to be feasible. This isn't SNI bypass. This is this is the general. Oh, I see. Okay, I think that's got the wrong issue number. Or the, the, the yeah. issue issue into title mapping is wrong because that number ninety is just a general. I want to stand up a HTTPS thing without worrying about the details. Oh, I see. Seventy-two. Yes. Yeah, that looks more promising. Okay, so I think seventy-two. Um, if we want to make it a requirement, let's all kind of figure out how feasible it is. And if it is feasible, then let's bring back up. What does the okay. Google load balance, what does the um, GKE infrastructure do for, by default for ingress today? I'm going to be honest, I have to go look. And also there are multiple load balancer products. So <laughs> like in terms of the infrastructure. Well, AWS, we are using HTTP as default because we require a TLS certificate for you to have a HTTPS load balancer, but most people don't have it by default. Do you, um, Moonfish, I don't know your actual name. Oh, Yang. Apologize. Yeah, oh, Yang. Um, <laughs> uh, do you know if you support sort of making sure that the host header is going to be the same as the terminated certificate? No, we don't. We don't make sure yet. But we will. We do sometimes. I mean, using SNI to choose the TL certificate. But if we, I mean, but there is there is no certificate matches. We were using a default certificate. So you can specify multiple certificate per node balancer and we will choose the best match based on your host header. I see. Actually, oh yeah, the, the, yeah the, the, the default um, for the old TLS versions is also something that we have to keep in mind. The fall through certificate. But I thought that was actually, if you are using TLS 1.2 or something, they got rid of that at all completely. I'm not sure about that. <laughs> it's only for old backwards compatible compatibility client. So I think ancient versions of Java um, didn't support SNI. Um, some global load balancing products from vendors, that's, um, people that have vendor kit that's old don't support yeah, our 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 the balancer is based on SNI instead of host header. I see. Interesting. Okay, so yeah, please comment on here as to like what kind of behaviors uh, are going to be feasible, and then we can kind of uh, see where it stands. I would love to have it be more secure. I just we need to make sure it's we we're not requiring something that is going to be hard to get, but hopefully you know in a few months maybe, it'll change. Um, okay, so there's that. Uh, let's go back to the agenda. Or, or yeah, we were to, looking at that. Uh, whoever's taking notes, uh, that's great. Um, yeah, so the client settings, that's another thing that I think we should sort of break that out and someone can go investigate it. Um, does anyone kind of want to take the lead on that? I mean, do we want to try to use a, a common struct for the server side as well as the client side? That was just a suggestion. I'm going to put a, we should put a little question mark there. I can take a look at the client side. I think the way I'm, the way I'm thinking about it is that we would have one configuration for the, um, for a TLS server, for the server side TLS. And then maybe another conf another configuration type, which would be for your peer, and that peer 
TLS configuration would be for, on the listener side, you'd use it, you'd, you'd use it to configure how you want to validate the upstream, upstream client. Now this, what's on board? Downstream client. And then on the back end of the proxy, you'd use it to configure how you want to validate the um, back end server. Okay, thanks, James. Um, and then, oh, I, we didn't get to uh, the traffic split, but I think we're we're pretty much over time. Is that right, Rob? Yeah, oh, we yeah. just hit time. We just hit the time. Okay, great. So I think um, with this, I think we can make good progress on at least fleshing out in detail this this stuff in here, and then. Um, we can either, so how do you guys feel? Should we talk about traffic split or should we talk about L4? Next week. Maybe we should talk about L4 and just devote the whole session. And yeah. then, then we can re return to traffic split. Because traffic split actually might have some intersection with L4 if we want to talk about traffic split in L4 and like whether or not they interact. Yeah, I think we should first figure out like the L4 and then the listener side or the downstream side, and then we can move towards more towards the upstream side, you know, the traffic split and canary shadowing, you know, everything like that. Okay. All right. So then let's push that uh, to after I'll put L4. Put it to the and bottom of next week with the idea that we will not get there. But yes. And then all right. So then let's. Um, Let's comment on the PRs and issues. And let's get ready to talk about L4 next session. Okay. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye.